Hi, it's Denise with Ladybug Stampin here with another card tutorial for you guys today and a little bit of a technique. Today we're going to be creating this card or recreating this card, but we will be using different colors. Um, this is from the new bundle, the Roll Peacock bundle out of the new um, catalog from Stampin' Up. And I just love these images, these uh, peacocks. And when I got this set to play with, I went online and did, you know, I like to do research and trying to find out some different, the colors and of the peacock. And I came across a white one, which is considered an albino um, peacock. And I thought, oh, that'd be perfect. And I've been wanting to try this little technique. I hadn't tried it yet. If I have, I don't remember. And so I thought that would be perfect because I could use a different color on here. Now this particular suite in the catalog comes with some amazing foils. Um, this was the pretty peacock color, I think. And this is Old Olive. This is the one the color we'll be using today. And to coordinate with this for the wash, the color wash, we'll be using this gorgeous grape. I hope it turns out like this one did. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and let's get started. To create this look right here of the watercolor background, the watercolor wash, I guess, we are gonna be using some of our new Fluid 100 watercolor paper. This is different than what was in the last catalog. The main difference that I noticed right off was that it is definitely smoother. Um, some awesome watercolor paper. I've already been working with it and I really do like it. It's not as pitted maybe as the other watercolor paper was. So we should be able to get some really awesome images, stamped images on this. And next thing we're gonna need is just get you like a little palette uh, for some, that we're gonna put some reinker in. And like I said, we're gonna be using Gorgeous Grape. So I've just put a couple little drops. This is with no water, just a couple drops of water, a few more water, a few more, and that's got the most. And I think, actually I'm gonna put just a little bit more in this third one. I need it to be really kind of light. So I'm just gonna put another two drops in there. Cause that is really dark. The other one was uh, that Melon Mambo on this one. This one's got Melon Mambo. This one was a little bit lighter color. So it's gonna be a, it wasn't as bad. It, didn't, it, did, it had, I had a lot of water in those. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my Aqua Painter. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all, in this one, it is marked. It's got a, a, a clear lid where this one had a blue lid. I'm not sure why. I think it's got mixed up with my other one, but it helps me. And I got a piece of washi tape on here. This has got alcohol in it, um, just regular old alcohol. So I'm gonna take my Aqua Painter and just kind of put some water on here on this paper, get it started. And I'm gonna start with the dark color first. The one that's got the less water in it. Oh, okay, it's turning out perfect the way I want it to. A little bit darker at the top. And then, whoops, we're gonna go with this one. And then this one down here. And we're just gonna put some more water. So I don't want it to be, you know, too dark, too dark up there. I want this to be kind of really kind of light. So I'm just going to kind of take that. And I would suggest getting a little craft mat like this um, to kind of hold so your, your paper underneath does not get wet. Okay, why it's still wet, you want to take and you want to put your alcohol on here. And I'm not going to put as much as I put on the last one. So I can, okay, because I'll not show you on this one here. This one, I waited for it to dry a little bit and then started putting the alcohol on there and it didn't. You can tell that there's not many as many spots on this one. This one I did straight up as it was wet, like I'm doing now, but I did a bunch. So I was gonna try to maybe calm it down a little bit on this one here. And I'm just gonna go back over this a little bit. Sure I've got plenty of watercolor. Pick up some of that water. Because I want it to be more like an ombre effect, you know? More a little bit darker red, darker top, I mean, and then kind of, yeah, like that. And just kind of make some of those off. Get some more water off here. Kind of, I want it to be more, more blend. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna take just a little bit more of the bleach and I'm just tapping it. Okay. All right, we'll put that away. All right, I'm gonna put this away and then I'm gonna dry this. Now, I would suggest doing this one day and then stamping it the next day because you really need this watercolor paper to be completely dry before we go on to the next step, which is we'll be using Versamark. But I'm gonna go ahead and dry it with my heat tool, get it good and dry, and then I'll be right back. I have completely dried this, which is good. And I let it dry, I had to let it sit there for a little bit and then I just let it sit for just a second. Um, like I said, it'd probably be better if you did it overnight, let it sit and you probably wouldn't get as many um, uh, it probably wouldn't dry the spots as much as much. Now you can see I didn't put I put more here than I did on top. So we're just gonna see how that that look goes. We're gonna go ahead and I pulled out my stamparatus, and I'm just gonna put my magnets on here, and then I'm gonna grab the peacock right here. And I want to tell you when you're grabbing these big ones, especially with these got they've got they're a little bit smaller right here and a bigger body at the bottom. So you want to grab it and kind of roll it with your fingers, kind of just peel it off of there. Don't just yank it off because it will stretch your stamps. Okay. So we're gonna take this and then I'm gonna place this about where I want it. And we can trim this afterwards. Um, you can use a smaller piece. You can start out with a four by five and a quarter piece of uh, watercolor paper if you want. That's that's up to you. I decided to do it this way because I can always use these pieces for another card. So I'm just going to take this and kind of go down a little bit and over like this. I think I want that's about how I want it. So I'm just going to put my magnets over here to kind of hold the paper. Maybe I'll put it on this corner piece right here like that and over here. Now I will let you know on the my little mambo piece, I did not. Um, oh, I've got to take this, this up here. Um, I could not see the Versa Mark image on the watercolor paper, so I did it a three. T I think it three times, a few times, and um, I don't know how it's going to do on the gorgeous grape, since it is a darker color. But I know that it is working because I've done it twice already, and I can see that it's adhering. But to make be sh to make sure. <laughs> I'm actually going to do this a couple times, okay? I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I can, you cannot see it on the, that watercolor paper. Um, but it's worked both the both times I've done it. So I'm just going to put it on here. All right, it's going to be the last time. And I'm making sure I'm kind of pressing just a little hard in there because, remember, it is still watercolor paper. Even though it's not as porous as the last one we used to have, it's still watercolor paper. Right now, I'm going to take these off. I've decided to try this new shimmer white stamp emboss powder. I want to see if this shows up on here. Now, it's got sparkles in it, but let's just see. You know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. <laughs> but we can at least try it. And I don't, I don't even know where that peacock is at this point, so I'm just putting a bunch on there. But it's okay. I'm on my copy paper. Let's see. Oh, that's so pretty. Look at that. Let's hope it dries like that. I finished using the heat tool on the embossing powder and look at that. I hope that you guys can see that it is sparkly. Oh my goodness, I really do like this on the Gorgeous Grape uh, color wash. That is really, really pretty. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is I have got some of this olive, uh, old olive foil uh, paper from the um, what is it called? I can't remember what the, it's Peacock something, <laughs> but it's part of the suite. And now I'm gonna take this and trim it to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And because I'm very frugal, and when I layer this as a mat, you're not gonna see that this is cut behind it. And I've cut this piece out that I can use for something else. Um, foil paper is very precious to me, and I like to, you know, use as save as much as I can so we're gonna add this to this and I'm gonna get out my snail and just run this on the back and you can use snail or whatever adhesive that you'd like to use I'm just gonna use this okay 
And I'm actually gonna get my silicone mat out, just in case I got outside of those lines. And then I'm going to line this up. And, okay. So I've got a nice little old olive foil border. And then I've got my four and a quarter by 11 piece of car Whisper White cardstock. You can fold that over and burnish it, or you can score it at five and a half. I just fold it over, okay. And then on this one, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna take my snail and add to that. Okay, I'm gonna add this to the Whisper White cardstock. Let me try this. Open this up so it'll help me better. Yeah, there we go. This will help me line it up a little bit better. Okay. I don't know why I have a problem with lining those up. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better than my last one did. I'm gonna be using uh, the You Are Incredible stamp. I'm just gonna get out one of our B blocks out here and pull this stamp off. Now the other two I put, um, so very proud of you, but I thought I'd do a little, something a little bit different because I don't know why the, this gorgeous grape just, just does something. So I'm gonna get this out. Um, and this uh, foil is cut at seven and an eighth of an inch by one and three quarters of an inch. And the Whisper White is cut at three quarters of an inch by one and five eighths of an inch. And I'm going to just test that out. Oh, that's so pretty, y'all. And I'm gonna try to put it right there in the middle. Let's hope. Okay. Yeah, did pretty good. Actually, I think I want it on this side because that just looks more finished. That edge looks a little bit more finished. Let's hope it works as good on this side as it did on the other one. Okay, there we go. Looks good. Okay, we're done with this. And we're gonna put some snail on the back of here. Two dimensionals on the back. Oh, and before I take it apart, I think I wanna see where I wanna put this. Do I wanna put it up there or maybe in the middle? Cause I am doing this just a little bit different. I think I'm actually gonna put it up there at the top a little bit. Okay, but you can, um, I'll give you the measurements for the other one. I just decided to change the sentiment up all of a sudden on this one. Okay. I'm just gonna put it right here in the middle. Make sure that's kind of straight. Yep, pretty good. All right, and now let's get our rhinestones out. And get my tool here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my green, my old olive rhinestones. And I'm gonna put this, actually I'm gonna put these down at the bottom. I'm gonna change it up completely. <laughs> Let's just change it up completely. I'm get, so I'm getting the small, medium, and large. The large, medium, and small. And with that, we're done. So sorry guys, I got interrupted and I had to pause the video. But we've got the jewels on there now. So on this one compared to this one, you can see we've changed up our sentiment a little bit in the placement and everything. So this is cut at one and three quarters by one and three quarters, the foil. And then the Whisper White for the sentiment is cut at one and five eighths by one and five eighths. So I've changed that up. I've changed up the embossing powder and of course the colors, but it's basically the same concept. What do you guys think? Which one's your favorite? Do you like the Gorgeous Grape or the Melon Mambo? Do you like that it's placed up there instead of down there? I think it just added maybe a little bit of a sym symmetry. Is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for stopping by today. If you guys like any of the product that you, I've shown you today, of course, you know, click on the links down below. I'll have all the links for every, all the products I've used um, today. And if you have any questions, you know, of course, leave me some questions. All right, guys. Thanks for stopping by again. <laughs> have a great week. And don't forget to share, subscribe, and like. Have a wonderful week. Bye.